What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today We are opening up for the first time on this series a pack of champions of Kamigawa We actually tried to get these a long time ago and they were sold out, but finally we were able to get our hands on them Thank you to TCG player for being there uh, These are really really exciting. I will go ahead and say as a bit of a disclaimer uh, The names of cards in this set are notoriously terrible for pronun pronunciation. Excuse me uh, I'm not gonna do very well with that. So I'll just go ahead and apologize right now uh, But as always uh, we are gonna look at, at it from a limited environment So we're gonna see what we would pick in a pack one pick one draft of champions of Kamigawa See what we would actually pick out I will say that again with a little bit of a disclaimer because I do not know this set very well uh, I love the flavor of this set. It's fantastic, but uh, Unfortunately, it's one of those sets that I never really got to play with so We'll see what happens. Uh, I will obviously do the best that I can. Uh, sitting at the top of the value side of things, we have Through the Breach sitting at $60. Uh, fantastic pull there. Manamo School at Water's Edge is also sitting right around $26, $27. And then Azusa Lost But Seeking is right around the $25 mark. So all great cards, a lot of good value in this. Uh, some really cool mechanics that we will get to go over. Uh, and we start off with one right here, actually. Uh, Devoted Retainer is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white with Bushido, Bushido 1. Uh, when this blocks or becomes blocked, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Uh, this added so much extra value to combat that it was really just awesome to be able to, to safely swing in or do something like that and know that your creature can probably win combat. Uh, that being said, obviously other creatures had it, so it evened out pretty well, but it definitely encouraged some some blocking and uh, attacking a little bit more than normal. Uh, I do like this card, by the way, also as just a like filler one drop, but definitely not amazing. Uh, Devouring Rage is an instant. Uh, for four and a red, it is an arcane spell, which is actually relevant in this. Uh, as an additional cost to play it, you may sacrifice any number of spirits, which were a big tribe of this time. Uh, target creature gets plus three plus zero until end of turn for each spirit sacrificed this way that creature gets an additional plus three plus zero until end of turn that's an interesting way of phrasing that uh, i don't really like this card uh spirits though you can kind of exploit a little bit uh they had i believe it was like soul crap or it, soul shift that was it uh couldn't think of the name but soul shift where you can actually pull out other spirits if a spirit dies so it's actually pretty cool uh you can get some synergies there but i don't like this is a very all-in spirits kind of card and so i definitely don't like that uh Callus deceiver is a one three for three you can pay one and look at the top card of your library uh you can also pay two and reveal the top card if it's a land this creature gets plus one plus oh and gains flying until the end of the turn play this ability only once each turn uh, this is an interesting card. It is a mana sink, which is cool, uh, but it's a 1-3 three for 3 that only gets flying if, uh, if the top card of your deck is a land and you have to pay for it. I feel like that's just not very good, uh, so for that reason, I'm going to say no to that. Uh, Orochi Ranger is a 2-1 for 2. When it deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature, and it does not untap during its controller's next untap step. I actually kind of like this card. Uh, yes, it's a 2-1 for 2, not a 2-2 two -two for 2. But honestly, I feel like that's not going to matter much. I think it's probably going to die when it's going to die anyway. So I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, if you use it to block a big bomb or something like that, you can tap that creature down for a turn, uh, which definitely helps you to dig for an answer. Uh, that being said, it is a green card, so the green decks probably won't have too much in the way of digging. But I don't know this set very well, so I might be wrong. Uh, I do like it so far uh, above anything else. Uh, Kami of the Waning Moon is a 1-1 flyer for 3. When you play a spirit or arcane spell, target creature gains fear until end of turn. Uh, fear basically made it very difficult to block, uh, which is very, very awesome. I actually kind of like this card. It's definitely an enabler for the spirit stack, uh, which is great. And the spirit stack, I believe, tended to, be, tended to lean more towards black-white. Uh, so for that reason, I like this is a lot more than the red spirit uh, sorcery that we, or the arcane sorcery that we had. Uh, so I kind of like that card. We'll see. Uh, Call to Glory is an instant for one and a white. Untap all creatures you control. Samurai you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Obviously, samurai were a thing in this set, uh, and this definitely was a good card in a go-wide samurai deck, uh, which I assume most of the samurai decks were go-wide. Uh, I don't like first picking this by any means, but if I ended up in Samurai, it would not be a bad way to go. <clears throat> uh, Silent Chant Zubara 
is a one two for two uh when it's put into a graveyard from play you gain two life for each zubra card uh put into a graveyard from play this turn i don't like this uh you are going to gain some life off of it of course but uh if you're gaining a lot of life on it i feel like that's a bad position to be in so i i kind of don't like that the art's great uh i will say uh battle mad ronin is a one one for two with bushido two uh and it attacks each turn if able so Really, the idea is if it's unblocked, it's only going to be dealing one damage. Uh, but if it does get blocked or something along those lines, then it's it's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. So it's pretty strong. Uh, it kind of balances out a little bit. And it's probably decent in a samurai deck, like a red-white samurai deck. I still think I like some of our other cards a little bit better. Uh, Psychic Puppetry is an instant arcane spell for one in a blue. Tap or untap target permanent. And then splice to arcane. So this is an interesting mechanic. You can pay uh, uh, one blue as you play this this card and reveal it from your hand and play pay its splice cost. Excuse me. Uh, if you do, add this card's effect to another spell. So if you play an ar arcane spell, uh, you can basically pay this uh, blue cost and actually splice this onto it and keep this card in your hand. So you can use it kind of over and over. Uh, it's really really cool. I don't like this particular one, but that mechanic is fantastic. <coughs> Uh, Nezumi Cutthroat is a Rat Warrior. It is a 2-1 two, for 2 with Fear, and it cannot block. Uh, this is actually a decent just aggro card. I think it's great. The Fear makes it very difficult to block, which is awesome. Uh, so I do kind of like that. Uh, this kind of... Uh, I like this better. So Cage of Hands is an Enchant Creature. 2 and a white. Enchanted Creature can't attack or block. Uh, and then you can pay 1 and a white and return Cage of Hands to its owner's hand. This is a really good card. Uh, obviously, it's removal. It's basically pacifism. Uh, but if you find that there's a bigger threat, you just return it. And that's kind of awesome. Uh, our first uncommon, Saratami Mirror Mage, is a 2-1 for 4 with flying. You can pay 3 and return 3 islands you control to their owner's hand to return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, this is an interesting card. It's definitely cool that you can repeatedly bounce stuff, but it's a pretty high cost. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't know that I really like it uh, more than Cage of Hands. Uh, I would say no. Wow, okay, Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, Artifact for one, this is a great card. Probably not in limited. Uh, but you pay one, look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, and then you can tap it, draw a card, then put this card on top of its owner's library. Uh, so essentially you can kind of control your draws a little bit. It's a very, very strong card. Uh, the thing that I don't like about it is it's like kind of leaning towards in limited. It's like it helps you a little bit. It smooths things out a little bit for you. But I'd rather be playing a, a spell or, that is going to affect the board in a little more of a meaningful way than spend the mana on this. So, yes, it's cheap. I get that. but And it's obviously high value, which is great. But uh, not a card I would pick in limited. Uh, Graceful Adept. A 1-3 three for 3, you have no maximum hand size. Uh, this doesn't seem very good in limited. This is more of a constructed card in my opinion. Uh, but uh, cool art, I guess. And our rare, uh, Moijin of Infinite Rage. Uh, so 7 and 3 red for a 7-4. Uh, it comes into play with a divinity counter on it if you played it from your hand. Uh, it's indestructible as long as it has a divinity counter on it. And remove one and destroy all lands. Uh, this is a super powerful card, but a very expensive card, and in a color that really doesn't reward a lot of mana. So, I, I don't know if this is good, to be honest. Uh, I feel, it's definitely between these two for me. Uh, I think some people will definitely argue for Divining Top, though, uh, just personally I wouldn't. I kind of would take Cage of Hands. Um, the Infinite Rage is great, but it's just really high mana cost, I feel like, and with a lot of, like, kind of two and three drops in this set... I feel like it'd be very easy to lose before you could even consider playing this card. Uh, so yeah, I think Cage of Hands is probably the safe pick, but it's probably the one I would go with. Uh, even still, this is an amazing pack opening. Really good stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.